What's up you guys, it's Jimmy here. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to answer one of the very most requested questions that I receive. Should I get a master's degree in industrial design? This is should I get a master's degree in industrial design and not to be mistaken by do I need a master's degree to be an industrial designer. You do not. Just to cut it short, guys, you do not need a master's degree to be an industrial designer. The original question is, should I get a master's degree in industrial design? So let's just go ahead and talk about maybe some of the reasons why someone might want to get a master's degree, not in an industrial design specifically, but just a master's degree in general. So I have a list here on some of the reasons why some people might want to actually go to master's school and some of these reasons at the very top of the list here are not so good. I would say if these are your reasons I would recommend you not to go to master's school and then afterwards we'll talk about some of the reasons why maybe it seems like a good idea to probably go to master's school. This is just a personal choice guys you know everybody makes their own choices. I'm just talking about some of the things I've heard and my my personal opinion. A lot of these reasons at the top here is it's going based off of this underlining assumption which is masters is better. Masters is going to help me more than if I were to just have an undergraduate degree. A lot of people have this assumption that if I were to have a master's it will just be better. Reason number one, there is just a group of people out there that actually love going to school and they just want to continue it and they're not ready to leave students that I went to school with. They just love school and they just weren't ready to enter into the real world, get a real job, show up nine to five. So they just wanted to just continue school. They thought, well, if I want to continue school and I also think that a master's degree is great to have, why not just go ahead and do it? That's something that I've really considered in the past, but I didn't end up doing it because at the end of the day, I wanted to get some real world experience. And I also learned that you don't need a master's degree to be an industrial designer. So if you just graduated your undergraduate and a couple months later, you're entering into master's school, then this is probably your reason is because many people recommend that you actually go out and get maybe a year to two years up to three years of real world experience before you actually enter back into school and try to get your master's and this is very very beneficial because many times if you were to find a job after you graduated your undergraduate then there could be a good likeliness that you can get it paid for by your employer definitely a good reason to wait a couple years before you actually jump back into master school but going back to that original reason why some people they just love school so much that they're not ready to jump into the real world yet I had this thought before I thought you know what I'm gonna be working for the rest of my life and so why not spend the most time I can in school and when I'm ready go ahead and start working because you know work is just pretty much the end-all be-all until you retire okay so let's go ahead and move on to the second reason and this is because you want more education on the subject a lot of people they just love their major so much they love the subject and they just want to learn more and this is a valid you know feeling you know obviously people can feel this way but if this is purely the reason why you want to enter into master school i think that you should just continue the schooling on your own maybe learn on your own meet professionals design is my thing i went to school for design and so i thought i loved it so much let's go ahead and make youtube videos off of it and perhaps teach the next generation on how to become industrial designers how to become successful industrial designers hit that thumbs up button all right so there are plenty of ways with the internet now that you're able to do so much with a single subject that if you just love it so much if it's art if it's science whatever it is you can actually just continue that maybe making youtube videos just like me or starting a blog whatever it takes in order for you to just continue it don't think that masters is the ultimate solution going on to the next reason is masters will pay you more is that true is that true will getting a master's degree 
pay you more. This is a huge, huge misconception. It will help you get paid more, but not necessarily. And so committing to signing away some of your precious years, some of your hard earned money in order to get a master's degree, you could have put that somewhere else and actually have gotten a higher probability in getting paid more instead of putting it all in the master's degree and hoping it'll pay you more. When you hear about designer levels like junior level designer or a designer or a principal designer, these people are promoted to the next level not because you have a master's degree. They're promoted because you have experience and you have been with that company. You have done a lot of projects. You had real world experience. You have been proven that you can do work that will help the company to make money and keep things rolling on. Master's degree it shows that you've been good in school it shows that you have good grades it shows that you're a committed dedicated determined disciplined person but that hasn't been tested you haven't been put into the real world been given real tasks and then accomplish them to help the company. That is something that is just unbeatable. Two of the reasons why you probably should get a master's degree, not probably, you pretty much have to if these are your goals. Reason number one is you have a clear goal, a clear occupation that you are trying to pursue that requires you to have a master's degree. N not necessarily a master's, but if you wanna be a doctor, you have to have a doctor degree. You have, have to go to medical school. You have to have gotten that degree. There are careers out there that require you to have a master's degree. Just like myself, I wanted to become a professor perhaps down the line. And so having a master's degree will really help me out with becoming a tenured professor at a university. The whole idea is if you have a clear goal on why you are getting this master's degree, instead of just hoping that it's just gonna help you because having a master's degree is better, if you have that clear plan and that clear goal, then go ahead and get your master's degree because you must in order to become that profession, in order to become that career. Okay, actually going back to the subject of getting paid more, you actually do or can increase your probability of getting paid more with a master's degree if you have some sort of more of a business type of master's degree, not just any type, not in psychology or architecture or industrial design, something like an MBA or something in finance, more of a business type of degree that would actually help the business grow in a financial way. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that having a master's degree is not better than having just an undergraduate degree. It is better and you will probably get paid more. You will probably get a little bit more than somebody else that doesn't have a master's degree. However, have you ever asked yourself how much that could possibly be? Is it perhaps maybe a thousand dollars, two thousand, five thousand, maybe instead of getting paid $50,000 right off the bat, you would get paid 60, that's $10,000. But how much would it take to actually get your master's degree? How much effort and how much time would you have to put in? And how much time are you putting aside to get a master's degree instead of building up that real world experience and getting that extra $10,000 bump with just being with that company, those extra two years that you were spending getting your master's degree. You guys see what I'm saying here? It's kind of like you got to figure out a balance between should I get a master's degree or should I really work hard with the company, build my own personal experience in order to get paid more if that is your end goal. So now that you guys know some of the reasons why I think you should and shouldn't enter into master's school, let's go ahead and talk about a specific scenario. And this is a question by Hella. And it's essentially the same question that I received from many of you guys. Fundamentally, the idea of this question is that you already have an undergraduate degree in another profession. You want to switch over and become an industrial designer, but since you already have a bachelor's degree in another career, you are thinking that the only possibility is to go back to school, master's school, in order to learn industrial design, get that industrial design degree to be an industrial designer. I completely understand this question. You already have a bachelor's degree somewhere else, and so how do you become an industrial designer if you don't have a degree? Well, there we go, is that going back to originally what I said is that that you don't need to have a master's degree to be an industrial designer. I think you really need to have some sort of a degree that is 
kind of like an industrial designer. So something like a general design degree or architecture, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, just something that has to do with hands-on building, creating, things of that nature. And the number one thing that you actually need to become an industrial designer, the single most thing is to show your skills and show your experience in the form of a portfolio. Build up a portfolio of three to about six high quality industrial industrial design projects. Now these projects are going to be projects that you can either work on yourself, you can ask a friend, hey do you have a product that you want help building, then you go ahead and help them or it could just be a freelance gig if you can do that, find a client and go ahead and try to help them build their idea and create that portfolio really high quality, really thorough and that's essentially what school is guys, is that we're creating these projects under certain pretenses that are professor has set for us and we're creating it we're taking the time to build it we're going through the critique phases and refining and creating models and we're creating these not necessarily fake projects but these are projects that were set up by a professor in order for us to get that experience put it in our starting portfolio so that we can finally get our foot in the door then actually have some real world projects that we can actually work on and so if you can just build up that portfolio on your own, whether it's just coming up with a project idea yourself and then just working on it and then really documenting it and putting it into a presentation that is thorough that somebody can look through from the beginning to the end, then that's essentially the number one thing that you need to become an industrial designer. Now, the second most important thing is to see what jobs that you are applying for because there are some jobs out there that will require you to have an industrial design degree. However, the many jobs that I've seen will have you have a like degree, something like mechanical engineering, like I said, something like architecture or graphics design, something just similar like that, then it's good enough, especially if you have an awesome portfolio that will show your skills and show your experience and show that you can do this type of work. And if you don't have a like degree, I would say it's the same story. Make sure to have that awesome portfolio that you can show that you can actually do this work and also have a real good explanation of why you're switching majors, why you are moving from where you were, the degree that you originally have, to going into industrial design. Have a good story. Say that you have always been a creative person, but you pursued something different in your undergraduate, and you really took a lot of time to learn about industrial design, build up your portfolio so that you can get this job. So I know I'm telling you guys that you don't need a master's degree to become an industrial designer. And so the second thing to follow up on that is where do you even gain the skills? How do I even know how to become an industrial designer and the things that I need to know, the things that I need to learn? Well, there's a couple of things that you need to learn and those are in three different categories. Number one is sketching, number two is 3D, and number three is prototyping. So number one is gonna be you down with a piece of paper going through a ton of ideas of what this product can be. What this product and how this product can work and how this product is going to be used. And best way to learn that is to actually look at products that are already out there, learn and study about them, and also only focus on perhaps a category of products. Just focus on a single category and learn that as well as you possibly can. Pick one that you are highly interested in. Continue sticking with that category of products. Continue designing cell phones, variations of cell phones, because that's going to be your most focused and your most straightest path in order to become an industrial designer. And then eventually do a lot of ideas, sketch them out, learn how to draw. I have tons of videos on how to draw like an industrial designer, so definitely go check those videos out and just practice. You can do it. The second Second thing is to now pick up 3D. 3D is essentially learning how to build things in a computer. This is probably going to be the hardest part of learning to become an industrial designer. Learn how to build your sketches in 3D. Start looking up SolidWorks tutorials. Figure out a way to get SolidWorks, then start 
playing around with building very geometric shapes in SolidWorks just to get your feet wet, just to understand and learn about the project more. After that, then you got to learn how to prototype. So you got to learn stuff like 3D printing because the benefit of 3D printing is not only just to have it printed and it's cool and, and really awesome, right? But the reason why we 3D print something is so that you can analyze it. So you can see what you build on screen, but in order to fully test what you build, you have to have it in physical form because that's how the end user is going to use it. So a 3D printer really helps with that. Just know you don't have to own your own 3D printer. You can always use services. You can go online, upload your file, have it 3D printed, and then mailed to you. So just know that you don't have to own your own 3D printer. And also, guys, you can also do a lot of prototyping without a 3D printer. You can make stuff out of paper. If you're into crafts, you could use anything craft related. If you like clay or I've seen people also use Legos and connect. So whatever you can use in order to develop and kind of test your idea. But a 3D printer is good just because whatever you build on that 3D program, SolidWorks in this case, then you can actually 3D print what you designed and test what you actually built. So that's the benefit of a 3D printer. It's a little bit more of a refined prototyping process. And then eventually you can get a little bit more sophisticated. But at the end of the day, guys, just learn how to sketch, which helps you visualize your initial ideas. Then after that, learn a 3D program, which you can build your ideas in 3D. Then after all that, you eventually test what you created so that it is what you have been expecting. Or if there's anything that you need improved, you go back and you start sketching again, building again, printing again, testing it, going back. And you do the same thing over and over until you're finally happy with what you came out with. And in order to put it, everything into a presentation, just make sure to always be documenting all the work that you're doing, all of the sketches, put it all together so that if you had somebody else looking at your work, it could be very nice and organized and they could follow it from the beginning to the end. And so that will be your portfolio. The number one thing you need to be an industrial designer. Just do this with about three to six projects it could be projects that you come up with yourself. It could be projects that you have helped other people with. Just do that and put it all together. And that is pretty much how to become an industrial designer in a nutshell, guys. I hope you guys learned something in this video. If you did, definitely hit that thumbs up button. Also hit that subscribe button. All right, guys, my name is Jimmy and I will catch you in the comments and the next video. Peace.